Thank you very much, everybody. And, and it gives me great pleasure to be here today. Um, uh, and uh, I just want to start by thanking the organizers and the presenters and everybody who worked with me. I, I did have some uh, technological issues uh, yesterday, but I hopefully uh, this all got resolved today. But so thank you, everyone. <clears throat> um, today, I'm just going to give an update on our recent efforts for the uh, uh, liver transplantation for intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma. As, and I'm going to start by uh, giving a, a brief uh, description of what are the outcomes uh, of the available therapies. And mostly uh, surgical uh, resection uh, is one of the approaches that we use for it. Traditionally, less than 30% of, uh, uh, of the tumors are resectable at the time of the diagnosis. Of those who are resectable, the five-year survival can drop to about 22 to 44%. Poor prognosis has been associated with many factors, partly a microvascular invasion, lymphadenopathy, large tumors greater than five centimeters, multiplicity of the tumors and resection, and positivity of the resection margin. The other modality that's also very common to utilize is chemotherapeutic approaches. approaches. And for the most part, they've not been very successful until more recently, the, the combination of gemcitabine and cisplatin was applied and it was shown that uh, this combination improves uh, progression-free survival from 6.7 months to 8.8 months and uh, improves overall survival uh, from 8 months to 11.6 months. So there is a difference, however, uh, the difference is in, in months and not years. So so let me just go over, so, so resection is not that great, chemotherapy has some effect so let me go over the initial results uh, uh, of uh, transplantation. And this is a, uh, uh, the series that came out from UCLA several years ago. And this combined hyalur and intrahepatic cholangic carcinoma. When they looked at the results of the, liver, of the liver transplant, which is OLT, it was much better than the results of resection, which is RR. It was significantly better survival uh, uh, five years out at 40% compared to resection was about 5% survival. So they looked at the addition of chemotherapy to, uh, to the resection <coughs> or to a transplant. So the combination of a transplant plus new adjuvant therapy gave, you know, uh, resulted in the best outcomes with about 50 to 60 percent five-year survival. The liver transplant alone was not very successful at 20 percent five-year survival and adjuvant therapy did not improve much. Resection, the combination of resection and adjuvant therapy uh, uh, also was equivalent, and uh, the addition of chemotherapy in that setting was did not boost the outcomes of resection. So overall here, what, what we learned is that neoadjuvant therapy plus liver transplantation can make a difference. And that was shown in the multivariate analysis. Liver transplant performed better than uh, resection. Intrahepatic in this series was uh, the results of out the outcomes of intrahepatics were better than higher in this series. Um, and perineural invasion, uh, multifocality were the two causes uh, with the uh, uh, with uh, with uh, tumor recurrence, uh, and the tumor size also uh, five centimeters greater than five centimeters was associated with poor outcomes. So, doing that, uh, I'm going to move on to uh, another series uh, that came from uh, looked at all the, the European studies that, that um, uh, did liver transplantation for uh, intrahepatic cholangic carcinoma. And all of these were incidental tumors. They did not go and say, we're going to transplant for cholangic carcinoma. So in the first one, this is the cumulative risk of recurrence uh, after liver transplantation for tumors less than two centimeters and tumors greater than two centimeters. And obviously, the tumors less than two centimeters had Lower recurrence rates, at, you know, uh, at about uh, twenty percent in five in five years, whereas greater than two centimeters had a sixty percent recurrence rates in five years. And again, uh, uh, for survival, tumors less than two centimeters resulted in about sixty to seventy percent survival rate. Greater than two centimeters, greater than, uh, great, uh, resulted in about forty percent five year survival rate. So in that in this study, they showed that size is important. And the smaller the size, the better it is. And they were talking about a size that's about two centimeters to greater than two centimeters. So um, what do we what do we learn from all of that? That the application of neoadjuvant therapy can be effective with liver transplant. 
liver transplant for selected patients uh, uh, can be successful, but the question is, who are those patients that we're going to select? Because for the most part, uh, uh, cholangiac carcinoma is treated by resection. So, so since resection is utilized for small uh, you know, intrahepatic cholangiac carcinoma, liver transplantation is usually reserved to be applied to large unresectable cancer. So we hypothesize, so how are we going to select uh, uh, patients for transplantation from those who have large tumors and unresectable? So really starting uh, behind the eight ball. So our hypothesis was that uh, six months duration of stability uh, uh, under new adjuvant chemotherapy would be an appropriate sur surrogate marker for selection of patients with biologically favorable disease for liver transplantation. When we started this work, we were not aware, uh, that was a long time ago, and at the same time in Norway, they were starting their work also on transplantation for uh, uh, colorectal liver mats. And they employed the same uh, idea, uh, which is uh, observation of the patients under some sort of chemotherapy to select the biologically responsive tumor. So how did the tumors were, and, and some you may have seen the slide before, these were very large tumors. Uh, the, those ones here with the, the hilum uh, were both right and left, um, uh, included right and left lobes. Um, again, uh, in this uh, scan, there were tumors extended, massive tumor extended both in the left and right, multiple multiplicity of the tumor. That's a tumor that came back recurrence after resection, recurrence after resection in multiple areas, and again, multiplicity of the tumor. So these were by, by no means small tumors. So that's the protocol, new adjuvant chemotherapy going for six months. If it's stable, we put the patient for the transplant. And then after we, we uh, take the uh, liver out, um, we um, end the tumor with the tumor, of course, we put them on adjuvant therapy. So this is the, that's the overall uh, picture that we had today over the last few years. We've had about 65 patients that were referred for transplantation. 37 of them were listed. Those who were excluded declined to be evaluated for one reason or another. Uh, uh, some had resection and others who did not meet uh, medical uh, clearance for uh, transplantation. Of the 37 that we, um, we listed, five underwent resection, 18 got transplanted and 14 have not been transplanted yet. Seven of those are waiting for, are waiting for transplantation. So you can see that the numbers, the, you know, the, the numbers as we go down, uh, a significant drop in the number of patients presenting. And most of the exclusions because of the large tumors and the presence of tumors outside the liver. Patient demographics, um, uh, they were young patients, 42 years of age, BMI 25. Most of the, mo they had different diagnosis. However, PSC, and, and we thought that PSC was going to be an overwhelming diagnosis. It wasn't 27% of the patients only had, um, had PSC. Um, uh, MELD of the patients was very low, and because of that, we could not put them we could not give them livers through the uh, uh, regular allocation, and we had to utilize extended criteria livers. These are livers that usually are not utilized by other, uh, for other patients. Uh, these are livers that have maybe greater than 30% fat or uh, uh, size, or uh, livers were out and they could not be uh, put in the patients for one reason or another, so they have extended cold ischemia times. So these are not perfect livers by any extent of the imagination, but, um, but, but good livers. Uh, nevertheless, uh, to utilize. Radiographically, the tumors, uh, here we look at the median, and the median number of lesions was two. However, it can be up to five. Uh, median number of uh, maximum size of the tumor was uh, median size, ma median maximum size of a single lesion was 7.4, uh, but uh, single lesions went up to nine centimeters. The total diameter volume of the tumor was 10.4, but in other, in some circumstances, it was high as 20 centimeters and 18 centimeters. So on average, these were large tumors. However, when we took them out, the, the size was a little bigger. The number of lesions were a little, were a little bigger to about three. Maximum size of a single one is 6.5 centimeters. Uh, total diameter was about 8.5 for a single lesion. And if you look here, the total diameter of, uh, of the tumors were, can go up to 20 centimeters. By low burn in the most of, of circumstances, except with two patients, uh, some were poorly differentiated, some were moderately dif the differentiated. As a whole, there were no lymphatic invasion, very little perineural invasion, and and uh, few of the of the of the livers had microvascular invasion. No margins were positive. So, what were the results? And this was the initial uh, results that we published uh, back in uh, 2018. 
when this was only experience of seven patients, but and then uh, those ones who were uh, were not transplanted uh, uh, had about 18 uh, uh, months uh, of survival. So when we look at our updated experience, and this is um, it contained much more extensive tumors over time. Our overall survival is still really good at about 60% at uh, five years. And uh, without the uh, the transplant, uh, those patients that were uh, were uh, listed, uh, the survival drops to about 18 months. The recurrence uh, is there, and uh, the recurrence is about 50%, and the median time of recurrence is about uh, is about three years. And we we're not sure that some of those lesions were apparent. Um, and then grew with time, and we we were not able to resolve them. Some some sometimes we get problems with the chest nodules. Um, however, the, the the observation here is that even though there is recurrence, the patients some of the patients really lived for a, for a long time, greater than five years, greater than five years. Um, so recurrence does not mean it's end of the road for many patients. Um, and several of them, several of the patients did not have any recurrences at all. Um, we looked at genetic mutations. Um, uh, FG, FGFR is good, uh, FGFR is not, uh, KRAS is uh, bad, the absence of KRAS is good. So we looked at the genetic, uh, and, and this has been shown by, uh, uh, by, by Anderson uh, uh, many times. So we looked at the genetic mutation, it's very difficult to decide which one is good, which one is not for now. However, we saw a lot of, a lot of, the, a lot of the patients FG, with FGFRs uh, mutations, and I think that only one person had uh, uh, KRAS um, uh, here, which was the fourth patient. We, we have not been able to get any correlation with the uh, recurrence and the genetic mutations as yet. However, uh, the other uh, 17 patients are uh, are being under analysis. We are getting analyzed right now. So, so in conclusion, liver transplant can be performed in patients with unresectable intrahepatic carcinoma with excellent outcomes. However, at the present time, this is only applied for patients who have extensive disease that could not be resected or have recurred after resection. So we're really starting with very advanced disease. Uh, uh, nevertheless, we ask for some sort of stability to know that the tumor is responsive. Um, and uh, we, we have seen that the liver transplant exhibits survival advantages when compared to resection. And this is true at any stage, even though we're starting um, uh, with bigger tumors. The results of this case series is currently getting expanded. The original case series that got expanded with uh, 17 patients done. Um, and the results right now is, um, I, I believe they're good 60% five-year survival rate, which is equivalent to um, what we're seeing with um, uh, transplantation of patients with um, uh, colorectal liver mats. New adjuvant therapy and gene mutations can be utilized for patient selection. And I'm sure when we move along, uh, there will be more and more coming on. Uh, so thank you very much, and uh, uh, I appreciate all the efforts uh, to uh, to bring this talk. And uh, I'm, I think I'll uh, I'll be uh, taken off until the, uh, the questions to the end of the session. Thank you very much.